Today I'm going to shoot a very short video on how to do up your walking boot laces. I hope you enjoy it. My name's John. I make videos on camping, astronomy and walking for my YouTube channel, The Camping Astronomer. If you enjoy today's video, then please check my channel out. You might find something that interests you there. But in the meantime, let's crack on with today's video. So I'm fortunate enough to work in an outdoor pursuit shop um, and it's interesting there because you get to see people with all sorts of different shapes of feet and sizes of feet and get to understand the different lacing techniques that are um, needed to make sure that the boots fit comfortably on them. Uh, so it occurred to me that it would be good to make a little video covering the different types of lacing that, that can be used in order to overcome some of the problems that people have with their feet. So at the risk of uh, teaching people to suck eggs, I'll uh, first of all demonstrate the standard method of tying up a boot. Uh, you probably already know this and it's the method that most people would go to first time round. And we simply crisscross the lace up the boot into the eyelets. and then tie off a knot at the top. Sometimes people will do a double knot up here. Um, and that's the method that most people would uh, try first of all. However, because people uh, have all sorts of uh, shapes of foot, different widths, different volumes, two feet of different sizes, sometimes you find that this technique's not perfect and one foot, foot might fit perfectly and the other foot, uh, there's a slight problem to it. So I'm going to go through some other techniques that you can use to overcome these issues. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to split the tension of the laces in the boot into two distinct sections. So we've got a lower half and an upper half here. And it's often useful to be able to fine tune the lower half part of the boot uh, independently of the upper half because you may have a particularly wide foot, uh, maybe uh, it's high volume, you've got a high arch, in which case you'd want to make these laces relatively loose to maximise the volume in the boot. Alternatively, you might have a um, very low arch, in which case you want these laces to be quite tightly packed together. And what you want to do to isolate the lower half of the boot to the upper half of the boot is you simply get to a point two ferrules down from the top and you start to tie off a bow if you were, as if you were going to do a normal bow but you go round once again and you pull that tight and the feature of this is it's a locking knot so you can see I've let go of the laces and they haven't come loose here. So I can set these laces here as tight or as loose as I want and set the upper laces completely independently. Carrying on from there, uh, the most single most common thing that we see and that people want to achieve is to try and get their uh, heel locked in place in the boot. This can sometimes be a problem because many people have one foot that's bigger than the other so you end up buying a pair of boots that suit one f the bigger foot but the smaller size foot the boot is slightly too big and if the heel slides up and down in the back of the boot apart from wearing a hole in your sock it can cause blisters. So there's a technique uh, called heel lock lacing which can be used to lock the heel in place in the back of the boot and uh, pr helps prevent it from sliding up and down and what we do here is we do our locking knot two ferrules down from the top having adjusted the tension in the bottom half of the boot to suit whatever pressure we want across that section of your foot and now instead of crisscrossing as we did before what we do is we go 
run the laces vertically upwards. Now this can be a little bit tricky because the laces are um, inclined to come out. So having done that, we now take the end of the lace and pass it through the now vertically running piece of shoelace on one side and we do the same on the other side. And now we can pull that tight. We can do another knot, locking knot at this point and then tie our bow off as usual. And what this does is it creates a very, very secure fit around the heel uh, so you don't get any sliding. That, as I said before, will prevent blisters cropping up as you, because your foot's not now not sliding up and down the back. But equally, if your uh, boots are slightly too small, uh, one of the problems there is that your toe is hitting the end of the, uh, the boot and it pulls your foot back in the boot to hold the toe away from the end as much as possible. It's also extremely useful as regards walking downhill because uh, when you walk downhill in a, a boot, the foot tends to slide forward, the toe will uh, press against the end of the boot and within about 20 minutes you've got a black toenail and you can't go walking the next day. So this particular lacing technique called heel lock lacing, and there's a variety of uh, different ways you can do it, is a, is a good one for overcoming several problems. So you lock your heel in place at the back of the boot, keeping the toe away from the end of the boot regardless of whether you're going downhill or not and preventing the heel from sliding up and down against the back of the boot giving you blisters. So that is a really really good technique to know. This particular pair of boots are my old Scarpa four season uh, mountain boots. Uh, they're pretty stiff, they don't bend very much, uh, it's intended to work okay with crampons um, but they're fairly heavy leather and when they're new the leather is incredibly stiff. These have a high ankle point here and what you sometimes find with high ankle boots is when people put them on first of all and try and break them in the pressure here against their leg is a little bit painful until they've broken the boots in. So rather than using the standard lacing technique what we can do is a, a slight variation on a theme that keeps the this upper part of the, the the boot slightly more flexible so once again we might do our locking knot at this point here two ferrules down except instead of going across to the next ferrule up we actually skip one and go right to the top and the same on that side and then we go down to the ferrule we haven't used bring the lace around and tie our knot here and we may use a locking knot at this point or not depending on our preference but what that does is it gives the boot a little bit more flexibility at this point here in this direction which helps you break them in a little bit it just makes life a little easier and once you've worn the boots for a bit you can tie them up um, in your normal way so there you are there's a few different ways of uh, tying up your boots and people will use often a combination of different techniques uh, in order to overcome whatever problems they've got so, uh, well, I hope you found that video uh, enjoyable. Uh, if you did, it would be great if you could press the like button and maybe make some comments about what you did or didn't like in the comments section below. 
Uh, if you did enjoy it though, uh, maybe have a look at the other videos on my channel as you may find something of interest to you there. And if so, it would be absolutely fantastic if you could subscribe. That would really help me out. Uh, but in the meantime, I wish you well and cheerio until next time.